Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we are live, Clo. Are we live? We are live. Hey, Phil. Hey. Cool. Hi. <laughs> my name, my, his name is Phil. Yeah. My name, yeah. My name is Phil, and her name is Clo Willard. And together, we're building socialrunners.com, yeah. a platform where marketing people like me can book creative people like Phil. Yes, I'm curious what you have this week. Oh, it's a full bag. It it, it was really hard um, to not talk about uh, the one who shall not be mentioned because every time I mention him, it costs us how many euros? One euro. One euro. One euro. Yeah. yeah. It was a ridiculous Twitter week again. Uh, but I don't. I, I don't even want to talk about it. I, I still have my 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 verified. Yes. Take, yes. yes. <laughs> That's most important. But apart from that, it's it's like looking at a train wreck. Uh, someone who's managing management decisions are being made as if by tantrum. So every every time the CEO gets upset about something, um, they delete something or delete someone or take away the New York Times. But it was also they they changed the logo. That was ridiculous. Dogecoin. <laughs> Doge, yeah, Doge um, is um, ten years ago. 10 full years ago, which is like half a century in internet years, Doge was a meme on Reddit. Right. And uh, when you see when you see the dog, it's a Japanese uh, type of dog, Sh Shibu, Shitsu, no, Shiba Inu, Shiba I think. Inu, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, as you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are not the only type of crypto. So there was this this trend a couple of years ago to start meme coins that were just named after something, a random meme. And Dogecoin was one of those. And uh, for some reason, maybe it had to do something with, uh, you know, the one who should wish. Oh, fuck it. Elon Musk was being uh, sued. For min for uh, tweeting out something that influenced uh, the the value of this Dogecoin, and uh, it it could be interpreted as a uh, um, recommending to people to buy Dogecoin, mm. and uh, this is called manipulation of the market. If you do this, um, and uh, so he had to defend himself in court for this. So the whole thing was again management by tantrum. He was uh, upset or angry about this, and I say, you know what? Let's replace the effing Twitter logo yeah. <laughs> with the Doge. Uh, it just it disappeared this morning, and uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, let's let's talk about other things because <laughs> okay. the the only thing we learn about this is don't don't hire someone with a mental with a mental state of a five year old, a spoiled five year old, as your CEO. So don't don't do this, um, or send them off to a tropical island somewhere uh, populated with only beautiful women, just to keep them busy. Uh, uh, Mid journey. That's that's uh, what I think was uh, one of the most interesting things that I've seen this this year. We, sometimes this this week, I mean, sometimes we forget that the whole the whole thing, the whole generative AI thing, started not even a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dolly was launched just just before summer, and then. Uh, ChatGPT, that's another euro. Um, ChatGPT was launched in November, and in between there's this amazing development. And I, I think that is, those are two signs of what I call the technological singularity is a mm -hmm. unique moment in time. Um, about a year ago, the version one and version two of Midjourney were launched. So they were not yet available to the public. I think the beta was also launched, uh, I think in June, May or yeah. June. Uh, but these first uh, versions were launched uh, exactly one year ago. And uh, so an Instagram account called AI, A Interesting AF, so it's basically a, a wordplay on AI interesting as fuck, um, decided to compare uh, two images. So they are based on the same text prompt that you give to Midjourney. Mm -hmm. Uh, the text prompt is Donald Trump and Barack Obama playing basketball, and then, um, and then it shows what it looked like in what Mid Journey created a year ago when you type that in, and then um, if you click the the next one, so you can see it's it's very messy. This is this is today. This is what Mid Journey wow. is doing today. So you can see it. It, it it's the the difference is just incredible. A, a year ago, it still looked like. I don't know, someone on LSD. <laughs> um, 
Salvador Dali on a yeah. on a on LSD. That's yeah. that's yeah. what I think it looked like. With uh, it, I mean, it, basic things like body parts where they belong, um, like legs where they usually are, are just out of the window a year yeah. ago. That were out of reach for my journey. It could do cool things like, for example. Um, uh, 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 I don't know, a lounge uh, chair that looks like an avocado. It could do that. Okay. Uh, but people doing stuff, especially if it involved like limbs and hands and faces, that was beyond its reach. And then only one year after, we're looking at a, a pretty convincing picture. And we already know it's fake because Donald Trump would never play basketball. Um, he's uh, seriously overweight. He can't pull this off. <laughs> Uh, but if you look at the hands, uh, we discussed last last yeah. week that the hands were one of those things that are still very hard for AI to yeah. make sense of. It, it doesn't know how a hand works. Um, compared to a year ago, it's it's a big advancement. The hands are still like Barack Obama has these really long fingers, which is a good thing if you're playing basketball. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. he's got a good grip of that ball. It's a little bit too much. <laughs> but what I like is that they both look uh, the way they look today. Uh, Obama is gray. His hair is gray. And he doesn't look, uh, you know, he looks like he looks his age. And so does yeah. Donald Trump. And, and the, the details are amazing, like yeah. uh, Donald's famous hairdo, which is defying gravity and, and all sorts of other uh, forces of nature. Uh, and and the way the orange has been applied to his face, yeah. uh, very convincing. <laughs> so um, let's revisit this in a year, and then yeah. and then see how good it gets. Uh, yeah, the only will get better, because um, it's already good. It's already very good. I think if, if you see the difference between the two, so for those who are listening uh, on Twitter or uh, through the podcast, um, check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. Uh, the YouTube channel, if you type in Chaos and Amazement, it's pretty easy yes. to find. And you can uh, double check or subscribe to my newsletter, um, also called Chaos and Amazement on Substack. And then you can uh, check out the links. So, and there's another thing that Midjourney launched last week, um, which uh, picked, um, it, it kind of, yeah, it, it made people creative in, in different senses of the word. So last week or the week before, Midjourney added a feature. So instead of having to type in mm -hmm. words, uh, a prompt to have it generate an image, it now also works the other way around. So you can upload an image and then it will describe in words, in letters, what it sees. Um, but then, of course, wow. and you knew this was coming, um, it reminds me of Google Translate. So for us, Google Translate, when it was launched a long, long time ago, to us it was magic. And yeah. one of the things you could do was to translate something um, into Chinese or Latin yeah. and then copy that back and then have it translate back and forth and, until the, the result was nonsensical. That's at least one of the things I did. Yeah. Well, you can do something similar with Midjourney. So translate an image to text and then use this text as an input in Midjourney to see if this new image still resembles the ones that you uploaded. Yeah. So there are two, uh, creative, um, uh, two creative ways to work with this. So one of them is from uh, a Twitter account called uh, FOFRAI. And uh, what they did was to upload a number of uh, famous logos like the Starbucks one, and then have it uh, described and then feed the description back into Midjourney. And he did this for the Starbucks logo, for the Apple logo, for the Twitter logo, Adidas, and a few other. Um, the, the, the one for Pepsi is hilarious because it turns out something completely different. Uh, it turns out um, the word Pespi, not Pepsi, and um, a, a profile of a man in, in blue and orange tints, and he looks a, a lot like Robert Redford. Uh, so it's very far from uh, the original Pepsi logo. But the one um, that uh, I included in my newsletter, the Starbucks logo, actually looks really, really good. Um, it, she, now, she, the mermaid, um, in the new version, uh, has flowers in her hair and is even more stylized than before. You may remember that the original Starbucks logo actually had, um, how shall I put this, a, w a very weird mermaid. Because usually mermaids have one fishtail yeah. instead of two legs. And the original uh, Starbucks mermaid had two fishtails. And not only that, she was stretching them. To have, if if she were if it were human legs and and we're all adults here, we can just say 
what was going on. She would, if you would do this with your legs, you would have to put your toes behind your ears. Yeah. So if you do a lot of yoga, you can, ladies. Um, <laughs> but you have to do like a lot of yoga. And she was doing that yeah. with her weird fishtails. Okay. Which is, I can imagine that after a while, management was thinking like, maybe this could, you know, mm. Mm, trigger people, rub, rub them the wrong way. Uh, so they stylized it uh, so that it doesn't show, you know, the fact that she's flashing her vagina anymore. Yeah. If mermaids even have a vagina, because that's that's another, that's, that's a, a whole other yeah, it's story. It's like a laurel, or how do you say it? Like, Yeah, but they used, it's her tails, yeah. really. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway, the logo um, that Midjourney now uh, resulted um, actually stylized what used to be her two fishtails even further, and it's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. It's gorgeous. I can just see this. It this You know a logo is good when it works as like a, the small icon that you use in the app store? What, that, how much yeah. is that? Like eight pixels, nine pixels, oh, something no, like that? It's different sizes, 46 by 46. 46. If it works on yeah. 46, and if it works as a mural somewhere, yeah. and, and on a T-shirt, I would wear that T-shirt. Oh. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm really impressed by this. Um, the Apple logo, there, it goes a little wild with that one. Um, it, it returns. Do you remember the time in Steve Jobs' time when the Apple logo had rainbow colors? Yeah. Um, and then he stylized it in the 90s uh, to something, the gray shade. Uh, Johnny Ive would say aluminum, aluminum shine. Um, so Mid Journey went back uh, to the uh, the rainbow colors. And again, it's gorgeous. It, it goes a little off script there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. But I, I really I really like the creativity in this. Yeah. Um, so have a look at this uh, Twitter account and what Mid Journey did. There was another one. Oh, Adidas, I like. You like Adidas? Yeah, it, Adidas logo in Mid Journey's new version looks like uh, the the type of paper boats yeah, that you can, yeah. you know, that's the basic origami that you know Western toddlers are able to do. It's like fold a little boat, and uh, the Adidas logo. But there are like also that. many people uh, feeding ChatGPT with all the information about Mid Journey. And then, it, uh, yeah, YouTubers are doing this. And, oh. and then they make uh, examples of good prompt. Yeah. You also can find it on the website of Midjourney. And then you ask him, like, uh, can you make me an influencer in the year 30? And it, beautiful photorealistic pictures. It is really crazy. So you can work with both ChatGPT and Midjourney to feed good prompt. So I if you can do it back and forth, that's crazy. I don't even know who owns Midjourney. Let me do, let me do double check. So one developer it's of Apple. It's independent. It's independent. Different developers are working together on this uh, the project. The team is led by a guy called David Holtz, uh, who co-founded Leap Motion. And uh, uh, Midjourney is already profitable. I can I can imagine yeah. it's already profitable. I have a subscription. <laughs> you do? Yeah, ten euros. A month. A month. It's definitely worth it if yeah. you're a graphic designer. Um, how do you use it? Use it to create logos for your customers or is it to brainstorm? It's also good to make mock-ups about the logo. Uh, you have something to give with it, mm -hmm. not just a plain logo or something like that. So logos, it's pretty good at that. It's getting better at hands and it also appears to be really creative if you ask it to design interiors. So there was another Twitter user, uh, Eric, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's with handles on the internet. Generica, generica, I think you're supposed to pronounce it. And uh, with, uh, let me click on the logo. I think it's a she. Um, that's the, the literally the first time I'm actually wishing that someone would put her, she, <laughs> the pronouns in their bio, doesn't matter, generic and I. Uploaded an, uh, an, a, a picture they took from their actual interior with a, with the, with a smartphone, it's a beautiful, staircase with a plant in the corner um, but you can see it's a real interior because it's it's uh, it, it contains a you know a little bit like a I think that's a, a fire extinguisher somewhere on the right <laughs> or something that you normally never would put and then Mid Journey describes it as a staircase with a red carpet along it in the style of Paris school dark white and light beige classical architecture very long 
uh, detailed description. And then, of course, because that's the game, you put this prompt back into mid journey and it comes back with some wow, that's that's like what the staircase would look like yeah. after Alice in Wonderland yeah. fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, it's it's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. It's just I wouldn't want to climb it because, as you know, I, I stumble easily. Uh, and uh, but what a way to go, man! Uh, just to stumble across this, uh, you know, from from upstairs to downstairs. There's four examples in there, all all gorgeous. Uh, so Mid Journey is uh, very impressive. Um, so good week for Mid Journey. Well, yeah. Uh, but then, of course, I would like to balance it with uh, some more. Well, it's not really negative, but one of the main issues with generative AI is that it tends to have a bias, and it has a bias because it's been trained on content made by people, and people always have. It. That's how we survive. We need a bias because if if there if there if we didn't have a bias on what we think is beautiful, for example, mm. we would have to rethink what is beautiful every time we saw someone and wondered whether we thought they were attractive or not. But then, of course, there's bias that means that sometimes the AI is racist or stuff like that, and then so. That's that's a typical criticism of generative AI. Um, this week, um, um, a Medium account called Social Creature, uh, let me, yeah, a lady called Jenka, um, she uh, wrote an article about what she calls the American smile and illustrates it with a number of AI-generated images using the journey, by the way, where the prompt is something like a, a group picture selfie of some Native Americans um, and they're smiling, right? So um, there's a, a samurai warrior selfie. And uh, I hadn't noticed it. Um, French World War I soldier selfie, um, Egyptian warrior selfie. And then when you scroll through the images that she generated with Mid Journey, you notice that they all have the same smile. And that's not logical because it's the typical smile when someone says someone is about to take a group picture. And what do they say? The photographer. What does the photographer? Smile. Yes. Or? Spaghetti. <laughs> no. Cheese. Cheese. Yeah, cheese. Yeah. And, and that's what she calls the American smile. And, uh, of course, they all have, like, uh, perfect teeth, which I'm pretty sure that that's, that's ever since... Uh, smoking became popular and, and sugar became popular. Um, y you can see in the skeletons we dig up that it, it had a really bad impact on yeah. teeth. And there's a reason why in uh, pictures that were taken 100 years ago, people are always serious and never smiling. Uh, first of all, they had to sit still uh, because the, 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 the shutter time was, was yeah. a lot longer than it was today. But secondly, almost everyone had really bad teeth. Almost everyone had really bad teeth, and I didn't want to show it uh, on on the okay. picture. So I thought it was an uh, an interesting article. It uh, it opened my mind. It's called AI and the American Smile: How AI Misrepresents Culture Through a Facial Expression by a lady called Jenka. Um, she usually uh, specializes in health future, and she's uh, a UX designer. Um, that was that was interesting. Um, but it's true when you look at even like in the Egyptian tombs, no one is smiling. Uh, if you look at the way in the, from the Romans and the Greeks, no one is ever smiling. Nope. And uh, and now in every picture, people even there's there's even sometimes we smile uh, at a funeral because someone is is taking a picture. So it's so logical to go like smile, yeah, cheese. And this bias, um, a very recent bias, is now being reflected in, for example, Mid Journey. Okay. Um, a lot of interesting content this week. There was an, an interview in a magazine called GQ. I have no idea what the G and the Q stand for. The G is probably gentlemen's. It's a lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. magazine. And uh, so they uh, did an interview, a pretty long interview with the elusive Tim Cook. Uh, Tim Cook is um, the guy... Who uh, so when, when Steve Jobs, the CEO uh, of Apple and one of the original founders, died, um, his story as the CEO of Apple had been so epic that those were really big shoes to walk in. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever would want to succeed him uh, would be continually compared to uh, to Steve Jobs. And, and that's why I think 
design was really important and the role of Joni Ive was, was really important, I think. Yeah, yeah true. And it could have been Joni Ive, you know. Um, but I think he, he himself decided not yeah, to do it. I also think this. Um, he, uh, he, he stayed on for a couple of years, but it was very clear. And, and ever since he went away, you can see what his impact was because the design also changed. So that right. he did have a large impact and, mm-hmm. and he, he worked really, he, he was one of the few people at Apple who knew what Steve wanted. Uh, because most of them knew what Steve didn't want. Mm. I, I recently discovered that the reason why there's not a calculator app At on my iPad, iPad yeah. uh, but there is one on the iPhone, so it could be really easy, is because Steve Jobs didn't like any of the designs the, they came up with. Still, no, they're still so afraid <laughs> of Steve Jobs. Who's been that for? How long now? Over 10 years. Yeah. Still no calculator app, no weather app. Yeah, that's stupid. That's I've That's really stupid. Um, anyway, so Tim Cook, um, I had never heard of Tim Cook uh, before, and uh, he's um, he's like almost invisible. He almost blends in with the back in the background. He does his job. I mean, he speaks up when he needs to. I remember that he spoke out in a number of cases where I thought, "Wow, you need balls to do that." Mm. Uh, for example, um, there were two uh, terrorists uh, in a San Bernardino shooting, and um, so it was a, a married couple. And um, I think it was then, is it the FBI or the CIA? I don't know, Homeland Security. Uh, find out that these two had iPhones and then asked Apple if they would help them, uh, help Homeland Security, I'm guessing, um, crack the iPhone because they wanted to know what these two had been sharing in the days before, how they had been planning the attack, the yeah. shooting. And Apple said no. Uh, and you could say, oh, well, round of applause, uh, good guy Apple, but they were being practically forced by the American government, the government to give up these data and the government uh, brought Apple to court to force them uh, to give out, uh, I think it was then, back then it was still with uh, the numeric code. Yeah. Apple still refused. And then after what took at least six months uh, of, of legal fights, eventually Apple was being forced to do so and then eventually they gave in and by then, the American government said, no, we don't even need it anymore. We found an uh, Israeli company who's uh, doing it for us. Um, that's, so that's, that's when he speaks up. Yeah. I mean, when it's needed, he will speak up publicly and say, no, um, this is the line that we draw and we're not going any further. So it's, it's not that he's like completely spineless. He's not. No, no, he's, he's a little bit boring, but I think it's a good boring thing. Boring is good. Yeah. I mean, Twitter could do with a really yeah. boring uh, CEO right now. Anyway, we were not going to talk about Twitter. <laughs> so it's a fairly long. It's deep. It's, deep. <laughs> it's a it's a fairly long interview in, in GQ, and then um, there's two interesting things in in this uh, in this interview. So the first thing he says is that um, um, he knew from the start that um, he would never he, he wouldn't even want to try uh, to imitate Steve Jobs. So he deliberately never even tried um he because steve jobs would sometimes say things like he was not afraid of a crisis or or a conflict In, internally in apple there were a lot of fights and then tim cook doesn't know um so um tim cook says no my management style is completely different i try not to let the urgent take over the day um he likes to ask questions um and he knew that um, he needed to do this in order not to be compared because that was a battle that no one could ever win. Yeah. So he, he's doing this deliberately. It's also part of his nature, of course, yeah. um, but he's doing this deliberately. Last year he was at uh, Form- Formula One and he was uh, waving the flag and it was like like a robot. <laughs> like yeah, it was really crazy. But it <laughs> a was lot not, of memes. A but lot it, of it memes. was not a rainbow flag, for example, no, because no, no. He's, he's he's openly gay, but he never he never oh, uses really? it. Is he gay? Yes. Okay. Um, um, but he, Steve Jobs, if he were gay, that would I mean everyone would have known, you know, um, and and he would use it as uh, you know for his benefit. Fight. Yeah. Yes, he would he would he would start a war over it if he had to. Um, but Tim Cook is not like that. You know, he's more like yeah, okay, I'm gay. Problem. <laughs> Um, and then another second uh, element from this very long GQ interview with Tim Cook is that they, the interviewer um, is trying to nudge him into saying something about augmented or virtual reality. Because mm-hmm. um, where we, <laughs> uh, 
I <laughs> am still waiting for a decent headset. Um, I, I have this Oculus uh, second generation, I think. And it was pretty cool at first, but this is now, this technology is now a couple of years old. Yeah. The Oculus guys left, I think, at Meta. Before that, Google Glass was in... Yeah, but uh, I, I I hear that the latest Meta Quest mm -hmm. yeah, uh, is a really good uh, device. But yeah, I saw the device that Apple is bringing to the market and I like it. You do? Yeah, yeah there were leaks or rumors. Yeah, leaks, but it's always the same design as the leaks. If they have something new, like iWatch, uh, what, they, what did they have as well? Computers as well, or the SE. That would iPhone, be very, yeah. very, very good at it. Um, yeah. and, I mean, that's what they're good at. Yeah. If if you if you look at the latest that they launched, like the Apple Watch, they they really they push the envelope a lot further than the others do. So, if it would be like augmented virtual, re augmented reality, virtual reality. A couple of years ago at Microsoft, they call it mixed reality. So yeah. it, for them, it's like a, a sliding. It's a slider between what is on top of reality, yeah. augmented reality, and what you need f to be fully immersed in like virtual reality. So I'm guessing for Apple, it's also XR, right? Yeah. Uh, mixed reality. He, well, so when, when he's pushed in the interview, all he says is um, what one could do hypothetically <laughs> with this technology. So he says, if you think about the technology itself with augmented reality, just to take one side of the AR VR piece, the idea that you could overlay the physical world with things from the digital world could greatly enhance people's communication, people's connection. It could empower people to achieve things they couldn't achieve before. We might be able to collaborate on something much easier if we were sitting here brainstorming about it and all of a sudden we could pull up something digitally and both see it and begin to collaborate on it and create with it. And so it's the idea that there is this environment that may be even better than just the real world to overlay the virtual world on top of it might yeah. be an even better world. And that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm often thinking about what's the next step after a language model, after chatting. A personal assistant. A but, yeah, but personal what would assistant? it look like? We've been... You we, can give it uh, a name, you can give it uh, a look. Can be everything. Siri is a personal assistant and she's incredibly stupid and only a voice. Yeah, but you can buy an NFT, for example, that is a, a 3D character and you can use it as your personal assistant. It can be a pig, <laughs> it can be anything. But, but I, I, I would like, uh, you have like the AR Memojis of mm -hmm. uh, Apple. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing, but it's over your head. But if you can train it with, for example, ChatGPT, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, then it's personal assistant. I think people um, l like the idea of talking to something with a face. Yeah. And um, uh, it doesn't matter if this face, if they can touch it or not. They, don't even, they have to just be able to look at it, make eye contact, and then try to guess what the emotions are from the way the eyebrows move and the mouth moves. And uh, I, I think that's the next step. And, and I'm pretty sure that when Apple, when, not if, when Apple comes out with something mixed reality, maybe I'm just projecting my own wishes here, <laughs> but I think it will have a literal face. Okay. I, would, I like the idea. So, you know, Snow White um, had this uh, evil queen with her magic mirror and the evil queen would sit in front of the magic mirror, talking yeah. mirror that would tell her how beautiful she is. You're the most beautiful woman in, <laughs> in the whole world, except for one. And then that appeared to be your stepdaughter, right? Snowy White. <laughs> so I just spoiled the whole plot <laughs> of Snow White. Um, I would like a mirror uh, because um, a mirror, um, I like the fact that it has its own place in your home. I'm getting a little freaked out by wearing AI. Like you have to be able like, to step away from it. Like glasses. You're scared of that? Yeah. Um, when you have the same interface over your in your eyes because of the screen you have in the glasses. I still need this eye contact with someone else in the room. And if I'm ha wearing my glasses and I'm trying to show you something that only I can see through my... you see what I mean? So yeah, that, but that you, was you have a pro projection projection of the the character in front of you it's like ar like standing the star in front wars, of you like in star wars yeah. yeah i still like the mirror better magic mirror i want a magic mirror that tells me i'm beautiful <laughs> um I, no i think it needs 
a place in your house so that you can walk to it and walk away from it. Yeah. And I think it's because I... So Siri, I've deactivated her again. So until the next <laughs> iOS update. Um, but I remember a similar incident with Amazon Echo when we still have one in the kitchen. I don't like the fact that they are listening in. Mm -hmm. And that's what an assistant is supposed to do, you know, when you were you know, rich 100 years ago, you would have your servants waiting in, you know, around the corner listening and then jumping in yeah. uh, whenever they were needed. I don't like that idea. I just mm -hmm. want to be able to walk up to it and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. I have a question for you. <laughs> um, well, um, that's, that's mixed reality. I want to talk about Tinder now. If oh. that's okay with you. Tinder? Shoot. I don't know. Have you how ever been on Tinder? Yeah, but that's nine to ten years ago. You have ago. to be careful what you're saying right now. No, it's really long time ago. Uh, it was only you can swipe right or left. I don't know what it's doing now. If it has, has more features or... Mm. This this conversation reminds me of when people still used to read gossip magazines. So mm. everyone would know what the gossip magazines were printing. But when you ask, oh, are you... Are you buying gossip? And no, 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 no. <laughs> I just, uh, I was at the doctor's office and it was there in the waiting room. I would, so now with Tinder, it's like, oh, no, I haven't uh, reinstalled Twitter in ages. Um, Tinder changed everything. Um, it, it, was, it was launched, I think, a little under 10 years ago. And uh, if, if you look, so there's an article on, on a website called Every.2. Um, and uh, so the title is Tinder is way more important than you think. There's a, a graph in there that shows how in the past 100, 150 years, how people found their life partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, before Tinder, um, there was a little bit of Internet already. But the fact that Tinder was an app that made it so easy to swipe yeah. left or right and to match up. To uh, let people know. You're interested. Yes, in to giving these signals. Yeah. Not, not the, two or three generations ago, you, you had to go to church and then, you know, <laughs> look if he's looking and then maybe he was looking if you were looking uh, and then hide behind your little Bible or something. Uh, that was very, you know, that was very complicated. Um, and then most people, so I asked my students, the 20-year-olds, uh, how did you guys, do, do you have a boyfriend or girlfriend? A lot of them don't, by the way. Mm. Um or it's complicated, or they started blushing, or wouldn't explain. Um, but I asked, how did your parents meet? And then their parents, um, they, they met through friends in a bar, going out in a social environment. And then their grandparents, they met like in church or in the mosque, or it was a prearranged marriage <laughs> for some of them. So, it, it, and then now all of a sudden, like nine years ago, everything changed. And it's it's um, so the article on every the two claims that so marriage rates are going down and you would say why would we be mer worried about that governments are worried about that <laughs> uh, because governments want to know um, who the people are um, that have decided that both of them would combine their financial and other forces together and give some that's the real reason to get married by the way yeah. is that I have a castle you have a castle. We want to join these two little kingdoms into one bigger kingdom. And that's that's the whole idea of, of getting mm. married. Because you don't really need to get married to have children or to get a bank loan. But the government is interested in that because it points to ownership of, you know, grounds and houses and stuff like that. Um, now, uh, Tinder, uh, the article says, uh, so marriage rates are going down. But Tinder is for one-night stands, no? It depends. Um, so there's a couple of things that are typical for Tinder. Uh, one, 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 one number that really shocked me is that 42% is actually not single. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's shocking. So they are basically on Tinder just, you know, to see if they're there, still. There must be gossip. There's some girlfriend or boyfriend using... Th then Tinder you can still well. say it's like a deep fake or ah, someone okay. is uh, pretending mm. to be. But I, I heard stories like that who discovered okay. th through the, the single girlfriends that the, the official boyfriend was actually back on the market. That's a bad way to find out <laughs> he's planning to cheat on you. Yeah. That's a bad way for him uh, to get caught because he's maybe not even cheating yet, just thinking about it. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, and a lot of it, it just depends. So there are, that's one question I asked the 20-year-olds because... 
we would maybe think that you're on Tinder just for a casual, what they call in, in the United States, a hookup, which yeah. is basically one night of wild sex. And then just go like, bye, have a good life. Yeah. It appears that a lot of them use Tinder to uh, to find like a deeper connection with okay. someone and are hoping that it lasts longer. But it doesn't lead to marriage. Uh, so that, but Another thing that uh, not a lot of people know is that Tinder and Hinge and Bumble Match.com are all owned by the same company. Yeah. Um, Match Group. So everything started with Match.com before the apps. So Match.com in itself was already revolutionary because what it did, and I'm not sure if they were the first ones, but they were the first ones to do it well. So if you filled in your profile, you also had to fill in like a really long questionnaire. Um, not just asking what are your hobbies, because if you ask questions like that, people will come up with things that make them look good, not mm. necessarily their real hobbies. But it was asking you questions about situations so that they could find out what your personality was. And the idea of Match.com was that there's, from scientific research, they knew what types of personalities match well together. Very often, different personalities. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that's how Match.com started. But then they reached out. I think I learned from the first one who used um, apps to uh, find a, a one-night stand or a boyfriend-girlfriend, but actually apps like Grindr or uh, where, what was the other one called? Um, it was a wordplay with, with Gaydar. Um, so the first ones were actually for people who were gay, where the location was really important. They would they would just have, there were apps because this was the only way to find out if there was someone in in like a 15 kilometer area around you who was available that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why it became successful as an app. And then Match.com learned from this and then launched their own. Uh, so they're, they're having a huge impact and now this article is hoping that they will have a positive impact on marriage rates. Uh, who are, uh, there, uh, we, had, we already discussed this. There are some countries in the world who are having lower birth rates mm. because birth rates are also linked to marriage rates, not exclusively, but there's a, a clear cor correlation. And mm -hmm. um, so there are countries like uh, like Japan, famously, uh, but also Italy, Spain, where the birth rate is going down. And that also worries governments because if everyone is like a senior citizen, who's going to pay their pensions? Yeah. So we need uh, we need more babies, people. We need more babies. Uh, Tinder, yes, changed everything. Um, another thing that changed everything, and, and it's a completely different, completely different okay. topic right now. Emojis. Emojis. It's that time of the year again. Oh yeah, new emojis. New emojis. Yeah. It used to be big news uh, every year um, when new emojis came out. Usually because they were not yellow enough, too yellow, that uh, the, the skin color was an issue, mm. the gender was an issue. So a lot of culture wars have been fought with emojis as, as the battlefield. It, that's, it's, they're that important. Um, so ever since, uh, I think the first time emojis went mainstream was when they were included in uh, on iPhones, in iOS. I think that was... I think it was 2014. So yeah. emojis have been around before that. You downloaded the app before and then it yeah. was an input to your keyboard. So we had yeah. smileys, of course. Yeah. Uh, but the emojis, the way we know them now, uh, were around. Uh, but they became mainstream. Uh, we already, like, you know, when we only had texting. So we already used uh, the ASCII versions of smileys where you would have, like, a, a colon and, a, and, a, and a, an end bracket to, to tell someone that you were smiling and there were a lot of variations. I was very good at that. Um, uh, like a, a grinning devil, <laughs> ASCII, emoticon. Um, but then these little these little drawings came out and then, um, so I investigated it. Actually, this is a, a cultural phenomenon. Let's first have a look at the new ones maybe. Do you have that? Yeah. Um, so it's not very spectacular, don't get too excited. Uh, so there's there's one that's uh, like, a, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a, a shaky, smiley that is surprised at something. Down. Or is it maybe something. an earth-moving, ground-shaking orgasm? That could also be the yeah, case. Maybe it's an O-face. Or an earthquake. 
or an actual earthquake? No, no, too soon, too soon to make jokes about earthquakes. Okay, no, okay, no, no. Uh, the 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 pink heart is uh, getting a lot of attention, uh, and there's a new the hand emojis are becoming uh, very important. Uh, I liked it when they had like the Italian go. I like that one. So now it has something like stop. In yeah. the name of love yeah. sign, I'm guessing. Uh, a few animals, uh, like moose. a blackbird and a jellyfish and a moose and a donkey. Uh, some flowers, a fan, uh, and uh, some bubbles and a flute, random flute. Yeah. Um, so, no, that's not why we're talking about it. It's just that we don't realize that for the first time in human history, there is a written language that is being used for informal um, informal things like flirting or, um, yeah, it's mainly used for flirting, ordering drugs. Um, it's, it's also a language that is universal, like global. Um, it's originally Japanese, did you know that? So no. there's a Japanese consortium. Uh, they get together every year and then they vote around about which ones are being added. And then the designer teams at Google for Android, at Apple for iOS and a few other platforms, then interpret. Um, if, you, if you look closely, a hamburger looks different on, yeah. on an iPhone than That's it right. does on Android. So and uh, so this, this, uh, so they had, there has to be a consensus whether they are adding it or not. And then there's another rule uh, that says once an emoji is added to the, let's call it the alphabet of mm. emojis, it can never be removed. Okay. Yeah. So you might think, yeah, I think it would be cool to add like Doge <laughs> <laughs> as an emoji. That would be super cool. Yeah, that was cool 10 years ago. Let's not do that. So it's, it's, it's a very important uh, decision that they're making there. It's like a world standard uh, standardized code and what I like about it is my favorite one is by the way the the the, the poop emoji uh, about what's your favorite one I use the word the poop emoji a lot just smiley well the most yeah. often used is the the laughing with tears in your eyes yeah uh, that's yeah. that's most often used and then I think broken heart or something that which says a lot about our society but what I like about the poop emoji um, is that it's it's one of those emojis that a two-year-old understands it and and a 65 year old in Japan understands it yeah. although it is n there's no literal translation for what it means I mean why is it? Why is it poop? Why is it smiling? What is yeah. it smiling about? I investigated that. Cool. Because uh, the team of engineers, they had to be engineers, the team of engineers that defended uh, the adding the poop emoji uh, originally, um, they defined it as the, the, the alphabet of emojis needed an emoji that explained, that was used to explain a situation where that was not ideal, but okay. Mm. That's exactly what the poop emoji means. You're welcome. Okay, nice. So this is, uh, emojis are a lot more. Um, they, they actually say something about our society and, uh, and also the fact that uh, it's not even used anymore, that new emojis are being But you added. can use it also on a website. That, that makes it really interesting because it's universal in a kind well, of a way. Well, in your, like over here, there's, yeah. there's like the, the smiley emoji um, yeah. being used. And, and that's because everyone knows what it means, yeah. what it stands for. Isn't that amazing? I mean, yeah, we've had great. so many languages over the years, uh, the hieroglyphs and then Latin and, and Greek and the languages that we use right now and then the difficulties that we're having in translating them. And now there's this language that everyone on the planet can use to order the most exotic drugs online <laughs> 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 or to flirt with someone uh, and, and you know exactly what's coming when, when you're getting the aubergine or when you're getting the umbrella, you, d you know exactly what's coming yeah. and what, what to do. So it's, uh, it's amazing. So Tinder is amazing and emojis are amazing. Um, are there any remarks or questions? Uh, I love the rocket. Uh, this is your favorite. The rocket, yeah. Uh, sh the shed emoji, emoji, this is your favorite glow? Yes. Question mark? Yes, the okay. poop emoji is my favorite one. <laughs> um, the rocket reminds me, I judge people for using the rocket emoji in their LinkedIn uh, bio and, and in their name on LinkedIn. Yeah. 
um, and do you know why? So you know, you know, people who do this, right? So it's either the broccoli or the rocket. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea why some people? So in the field where you have to literally fill in, fill verheyen, you would then put a rocket after verheyen. No. Why would you do that? I don't know. Uh, I will launch you something like that. Yes, yeah, it's usually it, it was started by people who were into growth hacking. It would yeah. show you that you startup scene, growth hacking scene. Yeah. But the real reason is that if you get an, um, an automated message, uh, like I send them, I get them a lot. Usually they're sales messages. If it's automated, it will also copy the rocket in your message. And uh, if it's uh, manually typed in by someone, it would not have the rocket. And that's how they know they're getting an automated message. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're, yeah, I think it's lame. Yeah, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Know, to know if somebody... Yes. <laughs> so that's, uh, you'll, you'll think of us uh, next time you see someone with a rocket in their name on LinkedIn. <laughs> It was a thing a couple of years ago. I'm not sure. I haven't seen a lot of rockets. Let so. me also ask what's the umbrella used for? I think just rain is coming. Yeah, right? no, safe sex. Safe sex? Yes. Okay, Timmy. Safe yes. sex. You're welcome, Timmy. This could save you like so many <laughs> you know, awkward situations. <laughs> uh, yeah, safe sex. Uh, usually combined with raindrops. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, Tinder emojis. Thank you. For, keep them coming. Uh, the comments and um, I think, um, um, I, we haven't mentioned China yet, and uh, China is one of those. You're still oh. you're still thinking about the umbrella. No, no, right? no. He was laughing and he, yeah. he said thank you. You're <laughs> <laughs> um, China. So Jack Ma. Uh, is is the founder of Alibaba, a really interesting guy. I think he's, he's one of those people that I suspect of having an IQ of over near 200 or something. He's, uh, he's, he, he was really interesting because he would say things that would actually... He started off as a teacher and then started the marketplace. He a teacher. He's a teacher originally. In I China. saw a Q&A with Elon and I was laughing my ass off. Yes, these two. Yeah, that was bad Damn. chemistry between these two. Yeah. You, you could... And usually it doesn't show a lot of emotions. He's always got like this same like, hello, <laughs> yes, I'm Jack Ma. Well, I'm glad to be here. And then you could see he was like thinking, ah, this guy is so cringe. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that interview. Uh, I, it was about AI, I think. Yeah, yeah, yes. it was a big stage. And uh, yeah, Jack yes. Ma was really... Yeah. Trying not to roll his eyes yeah, yeah. Uh, very hard. Um, uh, so interesting guy. Um, and what he says about leadership is also, uh, he was one of those, uh, I quote I quote Jack Ma in my books, for example, about competitors, never copy your competitors, uh, copy your competitor and die. And so that's, that's his style. And then he disappeared. In the middle of the pandemic, Jack Ma disappeared uh, because he usually was a lot on stage. He was out in the open. He would go to, you know, uh, conferences, be a speaker, panel member, and then he disappeared. Uh, there were some rumors because he was literally nowhere to be seen, and neither was his family. So there were some rumors that he probably had some, it, that he had been disappeared by the government. Mm. And that sounds more like something a Latin American country would do back in the 70s, yeah. uh, but it wouldn't be the first time. And um, uh, he must have spoken out on, on, on something, a criticism of the, uh, the Chinese government. Anyway, he's back. So last week I, I said that AI had, uh, China had these really high ambitions when it came to AI. And these ambitions, these ambitions were kickstarted in 2017 yeah. when Li Sidol, uh, the then governing world champion in one of the hardest board games in the world, Go, was defeated by uh, an AI uh, computer. I think it was DeepMind, called DeepMind. Yeah. By yeah. the Google team, yeah. which is hum humiliating, of course. Um, and rumor has it that this kickstarted uh, a five-year plan where the government would support initiatives and startups and organizations who would work on, on AI. It made sense. And then it went kind of quiet. Uh, and, and now, of course, we're, we're living through our technological singularity but the video of last week will smith eating spaghetti was from the daughter company of, Jack of uh, yes exactly oh. and and so it, it coins yeah um 
Um, so he, he's he's back, and he's a clear signal, I think, uh, by not just him and the startups, but also the government. Like, I don't underestimate us. Um, it, 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 it was, it was a, it's a joke, but I still I still still like it. Um, it's called the C to C model, the copy to China model. Sometimes they're very fast at implementing something. So you can be the first in the race, but sometimes it's better to be the second in the race because the mistakes have all been made by yeah. the, the first, the, the one who started racing first. So they could quickly catch up. And um, so we had this daughter company of Alibaba. Um, Alibaba had a, a, a rough few years. Uh, had nothing to do with the fact that Jeff Ma was not there. They just had the same the same issues that all of the other tech companies all over the world had. They, ha they also had to fire like 10,000 of, yeah. of people last year, so they were no different from Meta and Google and all the others. But it's, it's not just Alibaba. You have Tencent, uh, for example, and uh, they just launched a paid, sub just like a couple of days ago, a paid subscription service for short videos. Uh, so they're actually launching what could become um, a competitor for ByteDance, so it's becoming it's it's a lot more interesting for a market to have two two players. It's it's even more interesting to have three players, mm -hmm. because if I think the Chinese government doesn't want one company by tens to become too big, yeah. and and that's by the way what happened to Alibaba now. Uh, so Jack Ma's return coincided with the news that Alibaba would break up into six separate smaller companies, uh, and then Tencent launches an initiative that is trying to break up. ByteDance's dominance in, in short videos. And then Baidu, which is basically, it started off as a Chinese Google search engine, mm -hmm. a lot bigger right now. Uh, Baidu has launched uh, it, its its own ChatGPT alternative. And it's, uh, so we have ChatGPT, we have Bard. <laughs> and now you're waiting, wh wh what's the name of Baidu's chatbot, right? I th It's better than Bard, I think. Yeah. It's called Ernie. Oh, I like it. Cute. It's called Ernie Bot. Yes, it's got a banana in its ear. No, the other one. Bart has a banana <laughs> in his ear, and then Ernie says, "Bart." No, Bart. which one had a banana? No, Ernie had a banana Ernie, in his yeah. ear. Bert was trying to. So yeah. Sesame Street reference for yeah. those who can't follow. Ernie is a really cute name for yeah. a bot, I think. Uh, so might be that next week or in a couple of weeks, we're not just talking about OpenAI and Microsoft and Google but that we're talking about what's coming out of uh, you know Alibaba's uh, Tencent or Baidu or maybe yeah. a dark horse that we don't even know about. Wow. So there the Chinese giant has woken up and it's uh it's ready to rumble. The race has started. Yeah. Now we're almost there. Uh, we have, uh, you know, that I like ending with a, a number of, you know, cute or weird things. I would like to start with something. It's still AI related, but I thought it was cute. It's called Uncle Rabbit. Um, and uh, so Uncle Rabbit is a, a new project that introduces a conversational holographic AI powered by ChatGPT. Um, and uh, but it looks like a little rabbit. No, that's that's too soon. Um, that's okay. Oh, maybe I forgot to. Let me see, Uncle Rabbit. Yeah, I got the link. You got the link? I sent it. Oh, oh he, he won't open. A no. bad link. Let me just, yeah. Oh, I, I got a, an error as well. So it's a bad, bad link. Go okay. home. Bad link, Uncle Rabbit. That's a shame. You can see it tomorrow in your show notes. Yeah, um, I'll just uh, sneakily replace the bad link with a good one. Um, doesn't matter. Um, I want to end with um, two things then. Something that we tried out before because we weren't sure uh, whether it would work in the browser. It's called MemeCam. Meme, so M-E-M-E-C-A-M -E -E dot Denmark, so D-K. Um, MemeCam combines uh, image recognition and GPT 3.5. So what you have to do, and we tried this out so you don't have to, we tried this out a couple of minutes before we went live. And uh, I, it, it just what it asks you, so memecam.dk, it asks you to take a, a picture and then it comes up within seconds with, uh, with a meme to go with it. And in my case, I was just like, yeah, um, it was literally four minutes before we were going live. Yeah. Um, so... Um, 
Uh, yeah, that's my face. I can't help it. And then uh, it comes up with uh, the text. When you realize the Zoom meeting you signed up for is actually a karaoke competition, it's actually <laughs> funny. Yeah. It's actually funny. Um, so I, I'm really impressed by how they combine, how fast it works. So you have you have to, are you trying it again? Yeah, I'm trying it. Oh, my God. Let's see. When you're trying to record a podcast, <laughs> you can't decide to sing back up. This one is good. Ah, oh, my you, God. You, you have to try it. It's just too good. Memecam.dk. Yeah. Super. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, and then the very last one is, is so deep, I ended up in New Zealand. Uh, it's called uh, Uproot. It's, so it's not AI related at all. It's just okay. uh, something that generates uh, the words. It's called a magic crystal ball uh, by a website called OP Root, Uproot. Um, it offers uh, an interactive way to receive messages from the beyond. Um, um, let's see if it works for us. Because uh, So there's a crystal ball, and when you click on it, something happens. It's always something different. I've never, so now it's, the text says, I've never been declared persona non grata, but I've definitely been declared grata non persona. That's Latin. That was deep. I had no idea what it meant. Let's no. try another one. Um, Can you click again? Yeah. yeah. Peace and friendship with all mankind is our wisest policy, and I wish we may be permitted to pursue it. I think that's a good ending for yeah. today's podcast. Yeah. So, guys, thank you very much yes. for watching again. Peace and friendship with yeah. all mankind. Don't forget to subscribe. Next week, we are back with more. And thanks, everyone, for watching and for listening. And uh, talk to you same time next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you. Peace and friendship.